well, let's see here. We got our multimeter. Uh, I think we need some solder. And uh, oh, oh, hello, folks. Officer Tony here. Today we got another unboxing video. And if you want to take a guess what is in the box, it's all over this table right here. Yep. So, mm, watch the video and uh, Ricky will take this stuff out of a box, which some people seem to enjoy. And then he's going to talk about it. I just got finished testing the pickups. They work. Yeah. So anyway, on with the show. Hey, check it out. I got my Stumac kit in the mail today. It's cool, right? I noticed on the website, at least on Amazon, one of the people who bought this was complaining that the picture was on the outside of the box and it was supposed to be a present. Uh, that's not cool. Like, I don't know why they put the sticker on the outside of the box, but the funny thing is the box itself, it's like, it's like the shape of a guitar. Let's open it up and see what's inside, shall we? Where's my cutter? That's enough out of you. Fragile, must be French. Sorry about the uh, the camera mic. You ready? So we have got we have a packing slip here. We got a cool little book, beautiful little book actually, with uh, ads for tools and other projects. You can build amps, you can build acoustic guitars. I'd love to build a tube amp, but the cost of admission is a little high. So the reason that this thing is shaped like a guitar is because it is a guitar. Here we got the booklet. This is a step-by-step -step directions. I have to say this is beautiful. It's glossy paper, the pictures are beautiful. Two things that you should know about Stuart McDonald. Number one, all their stuff is pretty expensive. And number two, it's everything I've ever gotten from them is high quality. So you get what you pay for. Sometimes I'll buy cheaper alternatives, but hmm. And what else we got here? Strings. I'll probably put these strings on and use them like when I set the thing up, but these are not gonna be like the strings I actually play, right? I play the Adarios or Ernie Ball on. I don't play generic knockoffs. And what's in here? A lot of screws and a truss wrench. And, oh, here's the wrench for the, uh, the tail pieces. And uh, I see tail piece parts in here. So hardware screws and whatnot, that's pretty cool. What's in here? It's heavy, whatever it is. Tuners. So these are tuners. Uh, I've seen cheaper. They're, they're not terrible. They're not terrible. I'll have to see if they're good enough. They might be. This thing is packed, packaged, I should say, really well. See, there's a lot of support in here. This thing is not moving around. I have to admit, I didn't think it would come put together, I thought I would have to do that part. So I'll have to take it apart and put it back together, I guess. Oh, the headshot, the, the headshot. Here's my headshot. The headstock is already slightly pre-shaped. It's not exactly like the photo, uh, but there's still room for kind of carving out my own design here. I'm certainly not going to leave it looking like this because this looks like something that I don't want it to look like. Uh, this is unfinished. Board is unfinished. Yeah, it looks like they bolted it on, probably just to, uh, to make it easier to ship. Hmm. 
they have definitely pre-assembled this. So obviously what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking it apart. The pots feel nice. Uh, tailpiece. I don't think that these are compensated. And when I get into actually building this thing, we'll, we'll talk about what that actually means. Pickup feels cheap. So this body, mahogany, you can see, this is three piece. You can see the lines here. Maybe you can't, oh yeah, you can. You can see the lines. Uh, it feels like it's been rough sanded. So plenty of work left for me to do on this. This is not cosmetically very appealing. But uh, once I stain it, it'll be fine. Yeah, so the body is rough sanded. It looks like uh, these are screwed down, but the pick guard is not. So I should be able to actually remove this right now. Of course, it's not wired up or anything. Yeah, I think they just kind of put the neck on just for shipping. How about I not break this before I actually build it? So let's see what kind of pocket fit we have it the neck fit is okay it's not great but it, it's not bad now as to the neck so they said this is a maple neck look at this though no skunk stripe which thrills me beyond belief i love that it's uh it feels like a, a modern c it might be a little bit chunkier than like a, a stock made in mexico telecaster but the neck looks pretty good yeah that looks good. Headstock, I gotta figure out what to do up here. I'll carve some kind of different shape in there. The nut, I can't tell if that's plastic or not. Uh, the fretboard is pretty. It's dry as the Arizona desert, though it's really, really dry. I don't know if you can see on camera. Like in terms of the fret work, there's a, a little bit of fret sprout on the edges, but nothing terrible. The frets themselves are tiny. They are very small. And I think there's a decent chance I'm probably going to pull these frets and put in some bigger frets. But in general, I'm pretty happy. So I can, uh, I was thinking about doing like a red stain, like a red SG cherry stain on this, but I could also probably just stain this the way it is. It's, it's kind of a nice color. The front looks good. I mean, you can see the grain. It's got nice lines. It's it's three different pieces of wood, but it, it really doesn't look too bad. In general, overall, first impressions, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I'm pretty happy. A lot of work to be done on this. This is going to be a series of videos. But in the meantime, this has been an unboxing video. This is basically what you get out of the box. Okay, so I've got it unboxed, and I've taken the neck off, and I've taken it apart, so to speak. And I'm just going to go through some of my thoughts. Let's start with the neck. So I'm fairly impressed with this neck. As I pointed out in the unboxing, there's no skunk stripe, which just makes me over the moon happy because it's annoying when you feel that skunk stripe. I am not sure how thick. I think this neck is thicker than a traditional Telecaster neck. I might take some off. I don't know. It feels pretty good, but it definitely feels a little thicker. That's something to think about. I like a thinner neck, you know, but I, I am definitely in the camp of thicker neck equals like more sustain and better tone. So I have to think about that. The fretwork, there's uh it it's not great like on the edges. You can you can definitely feel sharp edges, but it doesn't matter because these are teeny tiny vintage frets and they're all gonna have to go. I'm gonna pull all these frets out. I have owned a vintage fret guitar before. I don't like them at all. That's where you're pushing down on the string and you are on the wood while you're playing. Uh, if you're a speed player, you like big frets. I'm not a speed player, but I do need all the help I can get. So I like medium jumbos or jumbos. I'm going to put Fender medium jumbo frets into this neck. So I'm gonna take all these frets out, put in those frets, then I'm going to finish the neck. I'm going to have to replace the nut, level crown, polish, and I'm going to reshape this headstock. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to do something more similar to a real Telecaster. I could leave it looking like this, but it just looks stupid to me. Like this is like, it's like jutting all the way down here for no reason. I'm so used to looking at a real Tele neck. 
or you know even a strat neck i mean i guess i could do like a pseudo strat thing on here couldn't i they like cut it up like this and then kind of curve around i don't think so though i think i'll probably go with more of a, a standard tally look but in general this is a this is a good neck i'm impressed with it the uh the edges of the fretboard are like hard angle so once I take the frets off, I'm going to be rounding that off on each side. So I'll probably do one video where I'm just pulling the frets and like rounding it. I don't think, I don't know. We'll have to see, see how long it takes me to pull the frets and to, and to refret it. So anyway, that is the neck. Very cool. Well, the pickguard is thick. I mean, it's really thick. I'm kind of surprised at that. Uh, that's good. I like thick pickguards. If they're too thin, they're like wobbly and cheap. But speaking of cheap, this is the pickup for the neck. And it's cheap wire, and there's a big old cheap bar magnet on the back of this thing. It's very possible that this sounds decent, but I wouldn't bet on it. Ugh. I have got a set of pickups from a standard Fender Mexican Tele. So the ones that come in the Made in Mexico Telecaster, I have those pickups. That's probably what I'm going to put in this guitar. But... I do have a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder that I might consider putting in this position. I need to think about it. Though, logic would dictate that I should probably listen to these pickups first. Nah. Okay, so this pickup here, I haven't taken this piece off because I really don't see me keeping this no matter what it looks like. My guess is when I flip it over, I'm gonna cheap, I'm gonna find another cheapo, you know, ceramic, big old honking magnet. Like, you know what this is from? This is from like they used to make those alphabet letters you put on the fridge that's probably what this is from <sighs> so the wiring yeah poo pickups okay so now you will notice there's no holes in this in this body so traditional fender telecaster has six holes drilled through the back and what you do is you put the strings in through the back and they come up through the body and they go over the the saddles here and then you're all set. I don't have a drill press, so it's gonna be hard for me to perfectly accurately drill those six holes. I mean, I know people who have drill presses, but what I just might do is for now, when I put it together, just put the strings through the back, which you can certainly do. And then one day when I get a drill press, then this will be my first project, won't it? That's not a bad idea. These saddles, these saddles feel cheap and they do not look compensated. I like brass saddles though. So I think I'm going to order some replacement brass saddles for this Telecaster. You know, I want to give this guitar every opportunity to kick major ass. And I think that that would be a good idea. So that takes care of that. Now, this guy here. You look at this and you'd say, these are crappy dime pots. And you'd be right. And this is a crappy, cheap three-way box switch. It's like basically a cheap oak printed circuit board. These electronics are junk. Let's just call it what it is. But having said that, the action on these, like how smoothly they move, they actually feel really good. Like normally with a dime pot like that with a piece of junk, it's super easy to turn it. These turn like really nicely. I, I don't know how they do it. I am tempted to just keep these electronics. I mean, I can replace that with a better pot, but it's not gonna impact my sound, not that much. So I might just leave these alone. This this wiring is terrible. These wires are awful. And then we've got a we've got a wire here, a little wire, which is this pickup right here, because there's a positive and a negative. And as far as I can tell, this bridge is not grounded in any way, shape, or form. So I'm gonna have to take care of that. So it looks like I'm gonna bust this job up into several segments. I'm going to be refretting the neck. I'm going to have to put some kind of sealant on the neck because, you know, it's just bare wood. So I'll probably sand this down really nice. I might take a little more wood off the back. And if I do that, I'll, I'll record it. I'm definitely going to have to reshape the headstock. So this is going to be a project. The electronics itself is going to be a project. This I'm probably going to leave alone, shockingly. The pickups are probably going to be replaced. I will probably keep this whole piece here, I'm thinking. Um, but I'm probably going to replace these with uh, brass compensated saddles like I have on, on my, uh, my Fender Telecaster. So then, if I didn't say it already, I'm going to replace both the pickups. And then the body itself, I'm going to have to decide what to do. Do I paint it? Do I 
I mean, I have to sand it, obviously. It's rough sander right now. But do I put like wood fill, wood filler on here, grain filler, and then like stain it, or do I paint it? Like, what's going to be the best way to proceed? Do I go with that blonde, stereotypical telly look? Or what I'm tempted to do is stain it like cherry red with like, you know, some black in it uh, from the from the grain filler, go like SG kind of thing. I think that could look really slick, but I've never done this before. So that could be a little risky. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go to some, uh, some friends of mine who are a lot better at this than I am and get their advice on it. I need something super easy to do that looks great. So that'll be another episode. This looks to me like anywhere from four to seven different episodes. So I'm definitely gonna be filming this entire process. Whether I space it out and do other videos in between, I'm not sure. I may need to do that because if I have to order parts, I have to wait for them to come in. I've also got the Helix native software, which I really wanna show. So yeah, that's where we're at. Next week, I will probably start working on the frets on this guy because I've already got a set of Fender medium jumbo frets and I think I'll start pulling the frets out of this and refretting it next week. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you're going to find this series interesting. I mean, if not, I'm going to do it anyway because I, I have to do the work. I'm committed now. And next Friday, I'll be working on the neck. And that's when I will see you next Friday at 5. <laughs>